So line loss is basically the loss of electrical power due to heat from the wires or the power transmission lines heating up. And so some of that is going to be dissipated into the environment and lost, not never to be recovered. So if you want to transmit power long distances, you would basically need to have substations along the way to keep transmitting that power. Now Edison was fully invested in this, and I'll put a link to a good uh, video describing the history of this. And so he really went to great lengths to try to promote this system, which was then solved by Nikola Tesla using a transformer and an alternating current system. So let's look at how line loss arises. So we know that power equals current times voltage. This is Ohm's law. And so here we want to deliver the same amount of power to the customer. And our options are going to be in proportion to current times voltage. So this means that if you want high current, what you can then do is lower voltage. And you'll get the same power output. Okay, so what other equation do we know of? So we also know that power equals I squared times R. So power going through a conductor like a high voltage transmission line is going to have some sort of natural resistance built into it as everything does. So these are our variables we can play with here. I squared and R. Now resistance, this one is basically fixed. We can't do much about resistance without changing the materials um, or you know shortening the distance uh, somehow, but if you're transmitting power long distances, that's not possible. But what we see here is that current actually dominates in a squared proportion. So this dominates the power equation. And if we think of P as being power lost in the line, then we want I to be as small as possible, given that R is fixed, and that will reduce, and that will reduce my power lost in the line. Okay, so if we need current to be reduced, we have another scenario from Ohm's law. So again, P equals current times voltage. Well, now we can have a low current and a high voltage. And we can deliver the same power. So given these two scenarios, which one do you want to choose? Well, if we have a high current in the first scenario, that's going to lead to a higher power loss. So let's choose the second scenario. The second scenario comes with its own problem in that you then need a really high voltage. And of course, a high voltage is dangerous. Ah. So you can crank the voltage up really high with a small amount of current, still deliver the same amount of power, except that this is dangerous. And the high voltage transmission lines we see are somewhere around, say, 200 to 600,000 volts. So indeed, it's a very high voltage that's going through those lines. Now, the practical solution, if you've got high voltage lines, is to just raise them up above the ground so that they can't interfere with anyone or with any buildings and also have them sort of far away. Um, so don't have them running through the middle of cities without appropriate protection. And indeed, that's what's done. Now, this doesn't solve the issue of how do you get the voltage to go super high and then be able to be used in a residential setting or into your own home where you might want a nice lower, more safe voltage. So that's where Tesla came in. He invented the 
transformer and the alternating current system to do this. So I think ultimately the transformer was the key invention by Tesla in order to have the modern luxury of ubiquitous electricity that we now know.